Hi, welcome to NPA Teaching. Today we are going to discuss the various applications of indefinite integrals in economics. The concept of integrals is widely used in economics. As we know, differentiation measures the rate of change of a function. But frequently in economics, we know the rate of change of a function and we want to find the original primitive function. For example, with the given marginal revenue, how to find the total revenue? Similarly, from given marginal cost, how to find the total cost? And also from marginal propensity to consume and marginal propensity to save, how to find consumption and saving functions respectively and so on. Thus, the inversing process of differentiation and finding the original or primitive function from its derivative is called integration. Now we are going to consider the some of the important economic applications of indefinite integral. See here the first one it is KT that means capital formation over the period of time. If you integrate net investment with respect to time, that is in integral of it with respect to t, then capital stock formation can be fined. Actually, the net investment is the rate of change in capital stock formation, which is derived by taking the derivative of capital stock formation with respect to t. Secondly, we have total revenue function. By definition, we know that a firm's marginal revenue that is MR function can be found by differentiating the firm's total revenue function. Since integration is the reverse of differentiation, given a marginal revenue function that is MR function, we can obtain the corresponding total revenue function by finding the indefinite integral of the marginal revenue function. We can use the same method to obtain the total cost function given a firm's marginal cost function as marginal cost can be found by differentiating the firm's total cost function. So the total cost function can be derived by finding the indefinite integral of the marginal cost function. Fourthly, we have the consumption function. If marginal propensity to consume that is MPC which is the function of income is given then the consumption function can be obtained by taking the indefinite integral of the marginal propensity to consume or f prime of y. Similarly, we have the saving function. If the marginal propensity to save, which is the function of income, is given, then the saving function can be obtained by finding the indefinite integral of the marginal propensity to save or f prime of y. Now we are going to consider some of the numerical examples of economic applications of indefinite integral. See here, the i, that means the right of net investment is given, that is 6 t raised to the power 1 by 3. And the capital stock at t is equal to 1 is also given that is equal to 85. And we want to find the capital stock function. As we are already said that, KT that is capital formation function which is equal to the integral of the net investment function which is the integral of 60 t raised to the power 1 by 3 dt. So which we can write 60 integral of t raised to the power 1 by 3 dt which is equal to 60 into the integral of t raised to the power 1 by 3 which is equal to 1 by 4 by 3 t raised to the power 4 by 3 plus c which is equal to 45 t raised to the power 4 by 3 plus c. So at t is equal to 1 then k is equal to 85 then substitute these values on the above equation then it will become 85 is equal to 45 t raised to the power instead of t we have to substitute 1 then it will become 85 minus 45 so c is equal to 40. So substituting c is equal to 40 then the capital stock function that is kt is equal to 45 t raised to the power 4 by 3 plus 40. Now we have another numerical example that is the marginal cost is given that is mc is equal to 25 plus 30q minus 9q square. And here the fixed cost is given that is 55. 
So fixed cost means that even if the production is zero, then fixed cost will be there. So FC that is fixed cost is equal to 55 at Q is equal to zero. Find the total cost, average cost and variable cost. So we know the total cost is the integral of the marginal cost. So total cost is equal to the integral of 25 plus 30Q minus 9Q square DQ, which is equal to 25Q plus 15 q square minus 3 q raised to the power 3 plus c now we are going to substitute q is equal to 0 then fc is equal to 55 so when the q is equal to 0 then 25 q will become 0 15 q square it also becomes 0 minus 3 q raised to the power 3 which is also become 0 then fc is equal to 55 so fc is equal to c which is also equal to 55 Therefore, TC is equal to 25Q plus 15Q square minus 3Q cube plus 55. Now, we want to find out the average cost. Average cost is equal to total cost divided by output. Thus, if you divide the total cost by Q, then it will become 25 plus 15Q minus 3Q square plus 55 divided by Q. So, this is the average cost. Now we want to find out the variable cost. Variable cost is equal to total cost minus fixed cost. That is total cost is actually it is the sum of variable cost and fixed cost. So the variable cost is equal to total cost minus fixed cost. So fixed cost is equal to 55 which is already given. When you subtract 55 from the total cost then it will become variable cost which is equal to 25Q plus 15Q square minus 3Q cube. Consider another example that is here the marginal revenue is given that is MR is equal to 60 minus 2Q minus 2Q square and we want to find out the total revenue function and the demand function. So in order to find the total revenue function we have to integrate the given marginal revenue function with respect to Q. Then it will become that is integral of 60 minus 2Q minus 2Q square DQ which is equal to 60Q minus Q square minus 2 by 3Q cube plus C. Now we are going to find the value of C. For that we are let us assuming that the value of Q is equal to 0. Then what happened the total revenue? If the value of Q is equal to 0 that means if output is 0 then the total revenue is also become 0. Therefore C is equal to 0. So the total revenue function which is estimated as 60Q minus Q square minus 2 by 3 Q cube and C here it, it will become 0. Now we are going to find the demand function which is expressed in terms of price that is P. As we know the total revenue is equal to price into quantity which is equal to that means TR is equal to P into Q. Therefore P is equal to TR divided by Q. So TR is already calculated which is equal to 60 minus Q square minus 2 by 3 Q cube. Therefore, if you divide the total revenue function with Q, then it will become 60 minus Q minus 2 by 3 Q square. Now we have the another numerical example. Here we have the marginal propensity to consume is given that is MPC is equal to 0 0.8. Then Consumption is equal to 40 when y is equal to 0. That means even if income is 0, there will be some certain level of consumption which is known as autonomous consumption. And we want to find out here the consumption function. As we are already said, consumption function is equal to the integral of the marginal propensity to consume with respect to y. Therefore, consumption function c is equal to the integral of 0 0.8 dy. So, therefore, c is equal to the integral of 0 0.8 which is equal to 0 0.8 y plus c. So in order to find out the value of c, let us assume that the y is equal to 0, then what will become the value of c? So substitute the value of y is equal to 0, therefore it is equal to 40 minus 0 0.8 into 0 plus c, therefore c is equal to 40. Therefore the consumption function is equal to 0 0.8 y plus 40. Consider another numerical example where the marginal propensity to save which is given that is MPS is given which is equal to 0 0.5 minus 0 
2 y raised to the power minus 1 by 2 and there is a dis saving of 3.5 which means that the saving is equal to minus 3.5 when y is equal to 25 that means income is equal to 25 and we want to find out the saving function as we are already said that the saving function is the integral of indefinite integral of MPS marginal propensity to save with respect to y therefore s is equal to the integral of 0 0.5 minus 0 0.2 y raised to the power minus 1 by 2 dy which is equal to 0 0.5 y minus 0 0.4 y raised to the power 1 by 2 plus c now in order to find the value of c here the income is given that is income y is equal to 25 and the saving is equal to minus 3.5 that is this saving that is minus 3.5 so if you substitute these values on the above saving function then it will become minus 3.5 is equal to 0 0.5 into y which is equal to 25 minus 4, 4 into 25 raised to the power 1 by 2 plus c so if you solve for c then it will become minus 3.5 minus 12.5 plus 2 is equal to c which is equal to minus 14 that means at y is equal to 25 s is equal to minus 3.5 the value of c is equal to minus 14 therefore the saving function can be write as s is equal to 0 0.5 y minus 0 0.4 y raised to the power 1 by 2 minus 14 I hope you are clear about the various economic applications of indefinite integral like the how to find the capital stock formation from the net investment, how to find the total cost from the marginal cost and how to find the total revenue from marginal revenue, how to find the consumption function from the marginal propensity to consume and how to find the saving function from the marginal propensity to save. Have a nice day and see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank you.